Dear friend, today's story is a lengthy one, but the travelers who came through the inn yesterday were some of the more interesting to ever pass through my doors. And their story and the incredible worlds they talked about, I had never heard anything of the like. I'll get right to it. The Inn at the Edge of Greenwood, Chapter 3, Meat Pies and the Multiverse. As you've woken up this morning on your travel, the road that you're on is still a familiar enough road, but there is a strange sense that comes over you as you kind of pack your things and, and prepare for walking over the course of this next day, that something's just a little bit off. And that feeling continues and grows as you begin to feel the first drops of a snowfall. Pretty soon, the snow begins to amount quicker than you would have expected. And you find yourself now ankle deep, shin deep, almost knee deep, trudging through your companion with you, of course, having a time themselves. Luckily, you see a light on the horizon and you make your way towards it, pulling your, your coat or, or whatever you have, you know, against you to, to buffer against uh, the snowfall and the cold until you come within sight uh, here through the, the falling flakes of an inn. Seems to be part of some small town. Uh, a name escapes you. You didn't see a, a, a placard or a sign anywhere. The inn itself just has a simple wooden sign hanging above the door with a green uh, pine tree painted on it. Dr. Aluso is uh, perched atop a donkey, a meal, uh, and her companion, Squeak, uh, this tiny little brown, as wide as she is tall, is typically how we see her squeak, uh, sort of like a desert rain frog-esque grung, is perched on top of a smaller, fatter mule, uh, and... As we, as as the as the uh, donkey sort of clop, you know, through the snow, sort of sludging their way through the snowfall, pausing in front of this inn, uh, Doctor Aluso pauses, uh, and and sort of muses out loud. I have a feeling we're not where we left off. Squeak. A squeak looks up at Doctor Aluso and says, "I have a feeling that perhaps you, the bossy, was very very mad at us last night." Snow in the Badlands has not happened in many, many years. That's true, Squeak. Perhaps someone in here, in this strange building, can tell us exactly what's going on. Dr. Luso dismounts uh, the mule and sort of tugs the reins toward uh, this inn. The door to the inn uh, cracks open a bit, and you see a figure silhouetted, uh, holding a lantern and a cloak over their, over their head. And you hear a, a voice um, a, of a young person kind of call out, uh, do, you need, do you need help with the, with, with the mules? Dr. Luso pauses, uh, and in the uh, light of the lamp, uh, Dr. Luso's face and their body is sort of illuminated, uh, and this person would see kind of like a, a person of middling height, um, not really extraordinarily tall or extraordinarily short, uh, with sort of like a, a blonde hair and an undercut, uh, brown skin, these wire-rimmed glasses, wearing a doctor's coat, uh, kind of like a lab coat, grease-stained, uh, with a collared shirt and these trousers on. And uh, Dr. Aluso is just uh, a little out of character, uses they, he, and she pronouns, so you really can't go wrong with how sure. you refer to him. Despite the kind of biting cold, doesn't seem to be shivering uh, as they're just wearing this like kind of thin lab coat. Though Squeak, uh, her companion, is is trembling. Uh, you know, her kind of uh, ribbed skin shaking uh, as she she sneezes a little bit. This tiny high pitched sneeze. Um, and Doctor Luso says, "Oh, um, is this? We would we would appreciate shelter. Sorry, we must have gotten lost. No problem. No problem." I Help me around the around the the side, and he and this this figure comes out and and takes the smaller mule and leads that one around the back to, of the inn with you. There is a small stable back there where very quickly your your steeds are 
given a stall, given some hay, and very quickly kind of like your, your materials taken off um, and, and stowed away for the evening. The, the figure still hood, you know, up and not really being able to see their face yet. He says, um, I'll, I'll get things prepared inside if you want to just come around when, when you're ready, uh, front door. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm Dr. Aluso, by the way, this is my companion, Squeak. Uh, we appreciate the hospitality. Your name is? Uh, I'm the innkeeper here. It's, it's good to meet you. Yes. Okay. Well, wonderful. Well, well thank you for, for taking our, our steeds. Uh, come along now, Squeak. And Squeak's uh, holding her rotund body, shivering, sort of hops along uh, Dr. Aluso as we, we go back around the front uh, and up the stairs. The figure has disappeared already kind of through a side door in, in you know, that leads into the back of, of this establishment. When you come around the front and enter through uh, the front door, you are greeted with a warm fire off to the left, uh, all the way at the end of this somewhat kind of almost banquet hall type space. Mm. It's a two, three story building, but this main room has vaulted ceilings mm. uh, with these big wooden beams. It's it's by no means extravagant or rich, but it is very, um, very homey and, and very rustic feeling. And so there's a there's a, a big roaring fire that's going on on the left hand side. On the right hand side of you, you see an L shaped bar uh, okay. with several casts behind it and different different bottles. And there's a coat rack kind of right off to the right hand side of the door when you first walk in. Various tables and chairs scattered throughout the hall area. Sure. Are we alone? Are there other people in here? At the moment, you are alone. And you, in fact, you don't even see the uh, the innkeeper, although you hear from the back room, you hear some some bustling. Okay, uh, so Dr. Lusso walks in, sort of starts knocking their boots to get the snow off uh, onto the mat. Squeak immediately, like just like waddles over to the uh, wood burning, uh, the, the the fire and begins like shivering ah, ah, and like rubbing her little palms, webbed palms in front of each other. Dr. Lusso takes pause, sort of muses out loud to themselves. This is an odd building. Hmm. Rather nubbleish in design. Uh, and they sort of walk slowly over to the bar and sit down on a stool. It's not long uh, after that, a young uh, man with, with kind of short brown hair and, and, a, and a young face wearing a plain white, off-white tunic, brown trousers, and an apron comes out from behind the bar. And he looks at you and he says, Oh, sorry about that. Um, had to had to get a couple things freshened up, and uh, your your mules have have all the all the feed that they could need. Can I get you something to drink? Uh, whiskey neat, please. You're the innkeeper. I'm sorry, I didn't catch I your am. face. Yes, yes, yeah. I'm the innkeeper. Ah. Um, and uh, what what was your name again? Uh, Doctor Aluso. You can just call me Hitsagutin if you want. Hitsagutin. It's nice to meet you. And he's well, while he's saying all this, he's pouring um, a glass of whiskey neat um, sure. and sliding it over to you. And anything for your for your friend? Oh, uh, do you have bugs? Um, I mean, we try to run a clean establishment, so it's it's not ah. something that I just yeah. Ah, no worries then. Uh, and uh, although oh, I have an idea, and he and he runs back. And he comes back a few minutes later and he's got like a small brown wooden box and he opens okay. it up and there's a bunch of dirt in it and he <laughs> pulls out, he's got night crawlers, um, <laughs> essentially for, he's like, I use these for fishing, but with this. He goes, oh, uh, Squeak, what do you think? Uh, Squeak is, is now like the snow is like melting off of her body. Uh, it's formed like a small shallow pool puddle, <laughs> like where the, she's standing on top of. She waddles over, looks a little distraught at the high stool, uh, but Dr. Lusa holds out uh, their arms and, and, and picks Squeak up, puts her on the stool, and Squeak looks at the night crawlers and goes, is this fishing bait? I'm afraid it's, it's all I've got in the way of bugs at the moment. You know what, just give me a cosmopolitan. Uh, she's just like waving her, her, her hand. Okay. And so he goes back and begins putting together as much of a mixed drink as he can with his, Great. with his limited capabilities <laughs> sure. uh, in this, in this inn. Yeah. Uh, and produces something of a mixture of different uh, alcohols uh, for, for Squeak. And you're not okay. sure that it's a Cosmo for sure. But. Yeah, not exactly. <laughs> just like, I've never seen a yellow Cosmo before. Mm. Uh, she sips at it and goes, oh, it's pretty good. Is that guava? Hmm. 
Yeah, it's a little, little, little bit of fruit, and just try to give it a little flavor, you know. Well, goodness, this is uh, <laughs> this is an unexpected snowfall, even for for these parts. Um, I'm glad I'm glad you came upon us before getting caught out in it. Yes, you can certainly say that again. It's been whew, years in my recordings uh, since the last snowfall in the Badlands here. Well, uh, no, I mean it's been. We, I mean, we had plenty of snowfall last winter. Um, I wouldn't call these badlands either, per se, but last winter, <laughs> uh, no, it was it was it was clear. I make sure to keep a strict uh, account of the environmental changes here. Oh, I had, I I don't doubt your word at all, my friend. I I it must have been that way wherever you're from, but uh, people come through this in from from all parts. Interesting. I've never seen or heard of this inn, actually, and I, I, I like to think that I'm quite familiar with Northern Talmud. Uh, where exactly are we? Uh, well, I'm not, I'm not sure where Talmud is. Um, this is Alsan, and we are in the north, uh, right near the elven borders, actually. The, the what borders? Uh, the elven kingdoms, they, they keep to themselves, have kind of not walled off per se, but, but kind of secluded themselves for some time. What do you mean elven kingdoms? They're all elves? Uh, it's, as far as we know, at, at least there's no elves down here. What? <laughs> Dr. Aluso is just like slowly lowering uh, her drink uh, onto the counter. And so Squeak is like looking down at the Cosmo slowly pushes it away. Um, Dr. Luso goes, are we in Endake? No, sorry, the, the, the kingdom's name is Alson. The king, the kingdom? Yeah, the, the, the new, well, uh, I, I see your confusion because the unification only happened a few years ago. Um, this was Alson, the, the province proper, but now it's the newly unified kingdom of Alson. Uh, squeak. Goes for the dagger, <laughs> strapped at her waist, but Dr. Lusa like puts a hand on Squeak's shoulder and Squeak pauses. Uh, Dr. Lusa goes, what year is it? Oh, um, uh, 1444, I think. It's a, it's a good year. I like the repeating numbers myself. AT? I, I don't, I'm afraid I don't know what that designation is. Aha. Uh, -huh. uh, Dr. Lusa looks remarkably calm turns to Squeak and says, Oh, I don't think we're in Andake anymore, Squeak. I believe Yudabathi might have thrown us into a different dimension. Um, and Squeak says, What? I get, what do you mean? Give it, how we, we're trapped here? And Dr. Lucy says, Ah, it's, you're quite lucky you're traveling with me, Squeak. Uh, I've known, I, I know how to keep calm in such situations. Uh, you, get, you get the sense that maybe Dr. Luso is saying this to like calm themselves, <laughs> as yeah. well as like calm squeak. Um, and they say, uh, I apologize, uh, my dear innkeeper. Uh, we're not from these parts. I, I have a feeling we might be actually very, very far away from home. Well, a lot of people who do come through here are just traveling through. There's, there's not a lot that live in this, uh, in this particular part of the kingdom. So, we're very well equipped to, to provide service to travelers. Although I will have to apologize, having having bugs on the menu is not something that I had previously made, uh, but I will make note of it for future for future guests. <laughs> Certainly, and uh, these other travelers, do they seem as befuddled as us? Well, I think a lot of times in the short conversations that I have with them, they, they're always headed somewhere, always mm. headed somewhere else. I see. Squeak, you can put your dagger away. I do not think this young man means us violence. Oh, goodness, no. He kind of, like, <laughs> backs up a little bit. He's like, I am, I am so sorry if, if anything that I did, you know, gave you pause in that regard. I'm, I'm very happy to have you and provide any service I can. Just, just watch yourself, bug boy. Uh, and she sort of does, like, the, like a, the two-fingered kind of... <laughs> Uh, Dr. Luso just goes, you, you must forgive her mannerisms. She is sometimes a little rough around the edges. That's all right. I, I, I take it this is uh, farther from home than you thought you were. This might be the farthest from home we've ever been. But tell me, tell me about this place while we're still here, until Yudabathi returns us to Endake, of course. Elven kingdoms, is there, is this 
that's odd to me. We don't necessarily... I mean, there are elves, of course, where I'm from. Dwarves, dragonborns, humans, tieflings. But to separate yourselves by species, oh, the, by heritage... Well, the, the dwarves died off almost completely long, long ago, and... What, all of them? Well, not all. There are a few, uh, although, to be completely honest, I have not seen one come through my inn um, in my time here. The elves, it's there have been some wars in the past, and, and they're... Uh, the blood between them and the people of this kingdom is is not good, um, so, but so, they make a mean brandy, <laughs> and specifically elven brandy. That is quite foreign to me. Is everyone here then a a human? Oh no! In fact, uh, most everyone in the kingdom is 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 well, uh, probably either halfling or gnome. Um, some humans, of course, as like myself, and 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 other other. You know, races, and you mentioned tieflings, we have those. We have dragonborn, genasi even. Uh, uh, yes, genasi, In, in yes. some amounts. Um, and I, I've seen a half-elf or two come through, but I, I don't condone it, of course, but the, the, the old wars have people's blood up against anyone with that heritage. Uh, it's, it's an unfortunate turn of events. Is all conflict drawn along these lines, then? Dr. Oluso looks both a little perplexed and amused. Oh, uh, not all conflict, but to be honest, it's it, my entire life they've been up in the north, and I've I've never even seen an elf in in person. Blasphemy and cult work. Uh, Squeak is like shaking her head, like this is super. This is unnerving her to the max. Uh, Doctor Lisa goes, "Yes, uh, you have to forgive us. Where we're from, we kill each other, not based on what we look like, but based on where we live." Interesting. Yes, but you still no, kill each other. <laughs> we do, we do. Unfortunately, it, it appears that war is a constant, uh, no matter where we go. It is an unfortunate one. I'm. It's one reason I'm so glad that when the king did unify all the kingdoms a few years ago, it was bloodless, although perhaps not, <laughs> not hmm. without some spite, but yes. Fascinating, fascinating. And you see Dr. Luthor take out like a journal, uh, though it's, it's more like a scroll. Mm. Uh, and they, they also take out, like, a, a quill, and they begin writing, uh, kind of uh, just on the counter, scribbling kind of furiously, uh, probably in a language you n probably wouldn't recognize. <laughs> nope, I would not. Yeah. Yep, yep. Dr. Luso does pause upon seeing their own writing and says, how is it that we can understand each other, then? I mean, you're speaking the common tongue. I am speaking the common tongue from where I'm from. Fascinating. <laughs> Must be the same tongue. <laughs> Must be. <laughs> and they just, they just keep scribbling down. Um, so, innkeeper, how did you find yourself keeping this in? Oh, I grew up here. Uh, it was my father's uh, before me and, and learned how to take care of it, helping him. And when he passed, uh, well, the deed fell to me and I felt it was right to keep a place that is a, a way station for mm. people such as yourselves on the road. Not that I don't, didn't have my own dreams of adventure, but someone needs to provide a, a warm drink and a soft bed to those adventurers as well. That you have a very empathetic disposition toward humanity. I do envy that. Well, humanity, halfling-anity, no <laughs> Halfling-anity, I've never heard that before. Ah, oh, most amusing. Uh, Dr. Lisa scribbles in their parchment again. They pause and they say, magic. Does that exist here? <laughs> Does it exist? Of course. Oh, you must you must pardon my, my assumptions about this place. Everything seems so different. I wonder if the weave is at work here as well. Um, and they snap their fingers and attempt to conjure like a small, just like a little harmless flame, like thaumaturgical, mm -hmm. like. Oh. Yep, it, it appears in their fingertips. Hmm. Dr. Lisa smiles a little bit uh, at that and uh, lets, lets the spark die down. And they sort of remark out loud, uh, I'm emboldened and, and relieved to see that the gods still are at work here. Oh, yes, they, uh, <laughs> they may not speak often, but uh, they, they grace us when, when we need it. Certainly, yes, of course they do. Wherever they're, whatever they're doing off in the beyond. Uh, and Dr. Liso <laughs> takes another sip uh, of their whiskey neat and lays it down. Can they I, to be, yeah, can I get you another one? Oh, uh, yes, why not? Okay, pour us another glass and Kind of looks over to, to Squeak. Would you like another 
I don't even know what to call it. But I don't I can try to trust put that together again. the words coming out of your mouth farther than I can throw a tadpole. Uh, Squeak, like it. it's it's quite all right. Uh, this innkeep me- means again means us no harm, but uh, if you'll excuse, she excuse her. That's fine. Give me a moment, if you would. And he disappears into the back. Um, you hear more just kind of general kitchen commotion as he continues his work, whatever it might be. Yeah, during this uh, moment alone, Dr. Aluso looks around. Uh, is there any, like, uh, uh, like writing to be had anywhere? Maybe, like, a, a menu that's up or something? Anything like that? There is a small, uh, not a menu on the wall or anything. In fact, you look around and there's very little in the way of any sort of art or, or mm. there's no writing per se on the wall. There mm-hmm. is a parchment that is kind of on the other end of the bar that seems to have some things scribbled on it that might be a menu of some sort. Cool. Dr. Luso hops off the stool, strides over to that area and inspects what could be the menu. And it is indeed a, a, a small menu just detailing what types of meats and vegetables and whatnot that the inn has, you know, pot pies and, mm-hmm. and very kind of mm-hmm. homey type foods. Sure. Written in common as well? Written in common, yep. Okay. Dr. Luso is like nodding slowly, looking down. What are, what's like the, the main special here? Like what's like, what are they known for? You take a look and there's there's one item listed under special and, and it's, a, it's a shepherd's pie, shepherd's pot pie. Actually. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Luso pauses at that. Does it have like ingredients under it or is it just It does not. It just says okay. shepherd's pot pie. Huh. What? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> they look a little perturbed uh, and they turn to see if the innkeep is back. Not at the moment, but within a few, a few beats, uh, he does kind of return. He's wiping his hands clean of water and he starts straightening glasses. He's like, oh, I see you've got the menu. Can I get you anything to eat? What is a... Shepherd's pot, pot pie. Why? Oh, a, a, a small pastry um, with a s- small pie stuffed with lamb and corn and mashed potatoes um, and some savory spices, and then cooked in the oven, just about yay big. So kind of like a bow. I'm not familiar with that, but hmm, I will have one of those, please. Alrighty, and he disappears, and Great. it's about. 15 minutes or so before he does bring you kind of a piping hot, small uh-huh. circular dish uh, uh-huh. with this baked pie inside it. Sure. Uh, you see Squeak's uh, nostrils flare a little bit as she takes in this delicious aroma. Uh, Dr. Lusso has returned to their stool at this point. A fork and a knife, I'm assuming? No forks, but uh, mm. a knife and a spoon. Knife and, okay, knife and a spoon. They pick up the spoon, the knife, they say, at least... These utensils are still familiar, and they dig in. Uh, they, take, they take a bite, and they go, mmm, fantastic. Uh, they take another bite, and just in a few moments, they're just completely, like, eating it. Yeah. Well, he, he kind of gives a small smile. He's like, well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoy. Um, I, I don't get a chance to cook those very often, so that was fun. This is delicious. Do you have a, a recipe, or, or is that a guarded secret? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I will write down the recipe of this uh, family dish. In return, you seem like the type of person with a tale to tell. Like I said, I've been here my whole life. I watched adventurers come through, provide them meals, provide them beds. A story every once in a while keeps the heart warm. (laughs) Very well. A story for a recipe. That seems like a fair bargain to me. What do you say, Squeak? What story shall we regale this young man with? Uh, Squeak just just sort of goes, well, don't, don't tell him too much. Maybe he'll come running after us with knives. Well, no, Squeak, I'm pretty sure that's just you. Uh, let's see, let's see, a good story. Uh, tell me something, Innkeep. What kinds of stories tickle your fancy? Stories of adventure? Stories of love lost and gain? Stories of thrilling escapades? I've heard a little bit of everything. Some people coming through here tell of, of stories of great treasures that they've found or lost, of comrades who have fallen in this pursuit of adventure or noble deed. To be honest, I always wonder, and I don't mean to assume, but for the more curious out there trying to pull apart what we know about our world, curious what you find. 
at the fringes of our knowledge, let's say. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Lusso thinks for a while, uh, sort of sipping at their whiskey and nodding slowly. This is a story about memory. I was born in Antake. That's the name of the realm I'm from. Um, I don't remember much of my childhood. Uh, all I really remember, honestly, is tinkering with tools I didn't quite understand, feeling magic pulse through my body like it were blood. I don't remember my parents. I think perhaps they're dead. I assume they're dead because I don't remember their faces. I know nothing of them. For as long as I've known, I've lived in a cottage at the edge of the Euclid chasm. That's, uh, hmm. Uh, they realize that they have to explain what all of these things are uh, in a way that is kind of new to them. It's a chasm, as you can imagine, uh, sort of bordering the Republic of Talmud as one of the eight powers in Endake, uh, bordering the northern part of the Republic uh, and the clans of Kirtal, they live on the other side of this chasm. Um, I live on this border, and my entire life, I've dedicated my life's purpose to figuring out the secrets of the multiverse and how magic works. I don't know why, but these questions, they pull at me. They compel me in a way that food, drink, Women, men, love, treasure, do not. Knowledge is what drives me. You see him really leaning in and just like eyes locked, like mouth open a little bit, just like with a small smile, like he is eating it up. Cool. Uh, and you also notice a squeak sort of muttering under her breath. I, uh, I hope it doesn't drive you to ruin. Dr. Eluso pauses and a, a, a small shadow sort of falls over their face. For the longest time, I've suspected, nay, I've collected evidence of magical, let's say, anomalies that have occurred in my realm. I call them spikes, for lack of a better term. They seem to happen at precise intervals over the history of Endake. I've built a machine uh, I, f for both my own safety and the safety of those around me, I keep it uh, deep, deep within the Euclid chasm. So if it malfunctions or if something goes wrong with it, if it blows up, it, the only things it hurts are the caverns down there. This machine allows me to track these magical anomalies. And I've noticed spikes of, 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 of magical occurrences, fluctuations, let's say, happening like so. Uh, and they they unfurl some more of this scroll and they actually rip uh, a part of the parchment off and they lay it out in like a, a long horizontal uh, sheet like uh, on the bar and they begin drawing a graph. Uh, and the graph is sort of like a, almost like a stock market graph kind of. And you see like spikes uh, go up and down and up and down and up and down. The y-axis is, is labeled, they label intensity in the common tongue, and the x-axis is time. Uh, and you'll notice as they narrate this, uh, the spikes start out small and pretty spaced pretty far out, uh, but sort of like um, exponentially, uh, the spikes grow both in height and, and they shorten in duration. Uh, and Dr. Lusso stops at the present. Uh, where you will see just the beginning of a spike going up. The innkeeper who has been tracking this goes, and if, and if that's now... Exactly. The previous spike was seven years ago. Well, at least in my world. I, <laughs> I'm willing to bet that these have no effect on this kingdom of, of this elven border kingdom. I'm sorry, what's the name of this oh, realm again? Uh, Alson. Alson, yes, this kingdom of Alson is safe from this, you can rest assured, but this is happening in, in my realm. We are on the precipice of another intense spike. Seven years ago, what that spike meant was the emissaries of our world have been, drawn, been, been driven wild. They have been driven to acts of great violence. Uh, even the good ones have been acting completely against their nature. Uh, emissaries, do they exist here? Um, in what way? 
uh, hmm. Uh, Dr. Luso again realizes they have to explain this, and, and they say, well, an emissary is, is a, uh, a monster, for lack of a better word, who, who represents a god, uh, who serves a god, and, and, and conveys messages and prophecies and omens to the people. I mean, we have, we have clerics and we have priests, but I, any monsters are usually from the southern wilds and, and the, the, the monster hunting guild takes care of them. <sighs> Monster Hunting Guild, uh, Southern Wilds. And they're like writing all this down. They nod and they say, oh, uh, these, an example of an emissary, let's say, uh, would, would be uh, perhaps a demon uh, or even an angel. <laughs> Thankfully, the kingdom hasn't seen one in a long time, but we do have, we do have demons. I see. That doesn't surprise me, actually. I, based on the fact that I'm here in the first place, uh, all these new things I'm learning, I have a hunch that some things translate across the multiverse. But back to the story that you so much crave. Uh, Dr. Luso nods and says, Emissaries have been driven wild. Uh, environmental anomalies have been occurring. I I've heard tale of, of huge storms in the southern sea, of the northern seas, uh, ice, ice flues cracking and boiling, things like that. Just strange, unnatural, magical disasters occur uh, every time a magical fluctuation happens. We are currently on the precipice of another one, and I fear, given the trend, and they gesture toward the exponential increase uh, in intensity of the spike, this will be the biggest, greatest spike and Dake has ever seen in its entire recorded history, and unrecorded history, I'm willing to bet, it will have disastrous consequences for our realm. Uh, that's why we were traveling in the first place. Uh, we were on our way uh, to warn some of the leaders of the world about this. You see the blood draining from his face at the moment, and he's leaning in really intently to those last little bits of, gr of the, the, the last points in the graph. And he begins to mutter back to you a little bit of like, it, it, the, the, the planes are, are, are unstable here, that a, a thunderstorm could shift the Feywild into, into existence for a brief moment. Um, it's just how life has always been. But we started hearing stories about down in Ferrith, there being some sort of abyssal cracks in the ground, in the Saints Preserve as well. Could this be connected? Uh, Dr. Aluso also pauses uh, and locks eyes with the innkeep, and you see just a little bit of fear uh, flash across their face. They nod slowly and they say, I have a feeling that Squeak and I's presence here is not uh, arbitrary. Perhaps a twist of fate has landed me here in this inn with you. So what are you going to do? How do, you, how do you stop the spikes? Your machine can do it, right? Uh, my machine detects spikes. I cannot prevent or stop them. Uh, I'm hoping that the leaders of my realm, uh, the eight rulers of this world, uh, will be able to overcome their differences in, in time to prevent this spike, but... And Dr. Uso does deflate a little, and you see uh, shame kind of flit across their face. And they go, ah, so far I have been unsuccessful in convincing them. Uh, the rulers I've spoken to, I've tried to talk uh, to the various Agons of Kirtal. I've sent missives uh, to the kingdom of Uhanahi. I I've even sent messages uh, to the kingdom of Tsulong, to the champion, to the champion and regent of Nabal. I'm on my way to the Court of Ravens now. I'm, I'm hoping that an appearance in person will be able to persuade them more than my messages, but they either don't really return my messages or they give me a stock response. Can't, can't you show them, and he kind of even picks up the paper that you've been drawing on, can't you just show them this? I, I do, I, I include these in my messages, but they either think th this is the workings of a madman or, <sighs> forgive me, innkeeper, I, don't mean to sound self-important, but I am a competent researcher. Uh, a, a squeak says, they're a, a bloody genius. <laughs> Dr. Lisa says, oh, that's, that's high compliment. He, he looks down at squeak and goes, I don't, I don't doubt it. I really don't. Uh, thank you. I do appreciate your faith in me, but I'm not very, mm, let's say, well-known. Uh, I'm not part of a party or a guild. Uh, in fact, I, uh, I met this man, uh, 
couple months, couple couple months back, a man by the name of Dalapathy Saeed. Uh, he spoke with me. I, I told him tales uh, of what, what I'd done. And I have a feeling he's been peddling these stories as his own. I've heard that he's built quite a reputation for himself uh, in, in, in the Republic uh, as a legendary adventurer uh, selling my stories. I Honestly, that doesn't bother me. Uh, I, I feel no ownership over what I've done. I, I do good things not to be known, but simply to do them. But now... I have a feeling that if I were known, perhaps they would listen to me. And perhaps my penchant for working alone is now biting me and the rest of Endake. I've heard <laughs> a lot of stories in this inn. And I have no words to give you of wisdom or... or I'm, I'm an innkeeper in, in the northern woods and these are... He he's the blood is still gone from his from his face. He seems yeah. visibly shaken. He actually kind of like reaches back and like grabs like a little glass of wine, which is a little sure. like shaking as well. He takes a sip and he's like, "This is beyond me." <laughs> it it's okay, innkeep. Um, Doctor Luso kind of awkwardly, like you get the the feeling like when they were talking about their their research, they sounded very competent. But now that you're like. The innkeeper is clearly shaken. Dr. Luso looks extremely awkward, like doesn't really know what to do with the situation. They like very stiffly extend a hand and pat you twice uh, on, on the arm. <laughs> uh, his, his hand kind of comes up and pats yours that's patting his arm and takes a breath. He's like, <sighs> um, can I get you another pie? Yes. Uh, Dr. Luso's face lights up. Absolutely. That, that I can do. And he drains the rest of his drink. <laughs> And then kind of shakily disappears. And you have another moment to yourself here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As you hear him cooking in the back. Sure. Uh, as, as they're cooking in the back, like a, a kind of somber silence falls between Squeak and Dr. Aluso. And Squeak says, after a moment, Titsagriton, I think you're right. I don't think we were transported here by coincidence. I don't think this is some arbitrary twist of fate or destiny. Speaking of, I think... It is our fate or destiny to be here. Perhaps this innkeeper can tell us something or we can learn something from being here. As much as I hate the fact that they don't have bugs for me to eat. Um, Dr. Luso says, Yes, Squeak, I'm of the same mind as you. The abyssal cracks. This man mentioned something about that. I think we should follow up. Uh, and, and they look expectantly uh, toward the kitchen, just waiting. Yeah. After a few more minutes, he does return with another pot pie, takes the old dish from you, and it is just as hot and just as savory as the first. Mm, delicious. Dr. Luso scarfs it down again uh, with no sign of being full and, and feeds some to Squeak, who like reluctantly finally is like like giving in and like eating a little. And Squeak goes, oh, delicious. Uh, she, she starts scarfing it up. Uh, and as like Squeak is, is slurping and, and scarfing up this shepherd's pie, Dr. Luso says, you mentioned abyssal cracks. What do you mean by that? I, uh, I just, I've heard some kind of tales from people who've been through that, that something's happening down in the south of the kingdom. There was, there's a small town called Ferrith that apparently had some problems with, with some sort of cracks to the abyss opening up in the town. And, and apparently all the way over in the Saints Preserve, they were experiencing the same thing amongst the paladins. Um, so not a... Not a isolated incident, I guess. I don't really know anything beyond that. What is the abyss? Uh, they say it's a it's a plane of fire and demonic presence type of thing. That honestly, a lot of times I thought they just used to tell stories to have children stay in their bed at night. Apparently, if you can trust the clerics, it's a real thing. A plane. How many planes are there? Oh. Um, I suppose I, no one knows. It's wherever the gods are. There's yes. the abyss. There's the fae. Fae? There's wherever, well, if you can believe the arcanist, there's a million planes where there's a million potentialities. I don't know. Fascinating. See, where I'm from, there are only three. Interesting. There's the now. Uh, and Dr. Luso, using the same piece of, of parchment, uh, draws a circle. Just like a regular circle. There's the now. And then they draw a circle 
around the circle, the after, and then they draw a third and final circle around it, and the beyond. Uh, and they point to uh, the center one. The now is, well, the now. It's here, it's you, it's me, it's what I can smell, see, taste. And they, they pick up the pot pie, uh, touch. Uh, the after, they point to the second ring, let's say, um, is where the souls of the departed go. Uh, after life, after the now. It's, it's where our spirits reside. It's the Raven Queen's domain, really. Um, and then they point to the third and final ring and the biggest one. And this is the beyond. This is where the gods reside. And, and these veils, and they point to like the lines, the actual physical lines they've drawn, uh, also exist. This is the, the realm ethereal, for instance. And they point to the, the veil between the now and the after. And this is the realm uh, astral. And they point to the veil between the after and the beyond. And no one really knows what's here. And they point to the veil between the beyond and empty space. He's kind of looking down at it, and he's like, it's interesting. It's... May I? And he reaches a hand out for the pen. Mm -hmm. Go for it. He takes it and begins to kind of sketch a little bit. And basically, he just draws, he draws like a box, and then a box on top of it, like just offset just the most tiniest bit. And then another box on top of it offset just the tiniest bit. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm no scholar, but the best way I understand it from, from those who I've talked to our world is many different existences simultaneously existing and fully of themselves. And sometimes when there is a great storm or a crack of thunder or whatnot, that barrier between the two is, is thinner. Mm. Um, the Arcanists say this is where they, they draw their magic power from, from pulling from one one existence to another. To be honest, it sounds like it might be how you got here as well. Ha! Uh, fascinating. That is a theory I would love to prove. Um, Dr. Luso nods. So, so these, these arcanists, I'm assuming they're, they're magical theorists, wizards, perhaps? Uh, wizards, sorcerers, alchemists, anyone who does magic without the allegiance to a, to a temple, usually. I see. Uh, the concept of a multiverse uh, is one I'm, I'm pioneering, let's say, uh, in, in our world. Um, I always had a feeling that there were other realities, other dimensions, other realms out there. This cements my theory. Perhaps these other dimensions were where we are right now, but now doesn't exist. Perhaps the after doesn't exist, but these boxes do. Perhaps the rules of the universe are different, depending where we go. He's kind of looking down at it, hands you back the pen. He shrugs. He just, he, <laughs> he, he very much looks like he's trying to get his brain to like wrap around it, and then kind of just goes, I, you're going to have to be the one to take it all the way then, because uh, all I know is what I've been told. Hmm. Well, dear Inkeep, all these stories that you've been regaled with, your father passing you this in, I'm sure you have a wealth of knowledge and expertise to draw upon uh, to both better serve the weary travelers who pass through here, and also perhaps to better guide your own life, your own path. At the end of the day, I suppose that's how this story ends. Um, and Dr. Lusa starts to roll up uh, the long graph. And as they roll, up, uh, roll it up, they speak. They say, no matter if the kings and queens and rulers and monarchs of my realm Believe what I say. I have faith in the heroes of my realm. I have faith that even if this horrific anomaly, this aberration comes to pass, whatever it is, I have no idea what it could be, heroes will rise. Light will spark in darkness. And all we can do, really, is help them. Uh, and Dr. Luso hands you uh, the graph. Oh, oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, consider it a keepsake of my time here. You know, I, I don't have much in the way of knowledge of the doings of kings and queens, or even of heroes, really. I think that I've always thought that as long as each person did their best to do good in the world, 
enough people did that, there'd be some sort of scale that would tip things the way they should. Hmm. So maybe if I keep doing my best and you keep doing yours, maybe the whole universe will tip in line. <laughs> yes, all it takes is a grain of sand, a single mm. grain to tip the scales. And perhaps this pot pie will be that grain. It is filling. It's delicious. I've never heard of, of, of such a pastry in my life before. Oh, well, uh, I owe you the recipe. And he kind of goes back and gets a, a scrap of paper and begins writing down the ingredients mm -hmm. and the cook time. Wonderful. Uh, and how to prep and brings you a nice handwritten note with the recipe for shepherd's pot pie. Great. Uh, Dr. Lucy sort of get, uh, chuckles to themselves as they tuck the recipe away. They say, you know, when, when you said shepherd's pot pie, I... I thought that a shepherd would be inside it. Oh no, the sheep. It, it's lamb. Yes, yes, that does make sense now. Do forgive my confusion. I, I was most befuddled. Do they put people in the no, pies no, where you're from? No, 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 absolutely not. That's why I was so perplexed. Got it, okay. Yes. Would you like a room for the night? Ah, oh, that would be lovely, thank you. Uh, hopefully the snow will clear up in the morning. Yes, and how much, how much do I owe you? I have a bit of coin here. You know what? This one's on the house. On the house. Are you sure, dear innkeep? I've I've collected quite a bit of coin during my travels. It would uh, perhaps uh, uh, it, it looks different here. It might be a nice keepsake as well. A gold piece? Uh, certainly. Uh, Doctor Lusa reaches in and and pulls out a gold piece that has a, the stamp uh, of the Republic of Talmud on it, uh, which kind of resembles a three-headed god. Basically, uh, you just see it's because it's a small piece. You just see the three heads, and on the back, a uh, written in in Palamadi, which is probably a, a language you, the innkeeper doesn't understand. Uh, it it just says one gold, and hands it to you. Kind of looks at you, he's like, not the gold of this kingdom, but gold <laughs> nonetheless. He pockets it. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're very welcome. Come along, Squeak. He prepares you a room where you have a restful night's sleep, and in the morning. The snow has all but melted. Uh, it seems to have been a bit of a flash on the weather, and uh, there's still little pockets of, of snow on the on the green grass where the sun is still hitting it. Mm -hmm. You do not see the innkeeper the next morning. Aww. He seems to be out. He seems to be out and about doing doing some sort of chores. But your your mules have been um, given fresh feed and looks like they've been brushed down. Ah, how sweet. Uh, so, Doctor Aluso. You know, wakes up, freshens up, nods to Squeak and says, Squeak, uh, prepare the meals. Could you put their tack on? I would just like to leave a note for our, for our host. Um, Squeak goes, okay, well, hurry up. I want to get home. We, we, need to tell, we need to tell the court uh, about everything that's going on. I, I don't know how many weeks of travel we've lost here. Uh, Dr. Luso nods and says, yes, yes, we must hurry. Uh, but returns into the inn, glances around for the innkeep again. Not there, no. Uh, and Dr. Luso pulls out uh, their parchment yet again, rips rips off a corner, and sort of s scrawls a note. Um, and the note basically says, uh, thanks, the innkeep, for the, his hospitality and for the pies and the recipe and for the drinks. And signs off with a question that is, uh, what? I noticed something odd uh, during nighttime. What is that huge glowing thing in the sky? Uh, and leaves referencing the moon. I'm assuming there's a moon mm -hmm. here. Yep, yeah, there is a moon. yeah. They were extremely perplexed. Uh, they 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 leave it uh, on the counter, uh, and they leave and go back to the meals. Doctor Aluso and Squeak were quite a pair, and this concept that there are all these different worlds living just next to each other seems to be confirmed by their appearance. I hope they made it home safely and that they can find out what's going on with the spikes of magic and stop them. It's all very legendary, world-ending stuff. Not anything that a lowly innkeeper like myself can do anything to turn the rudder on. Still, it's incredible to think about. There are so many people trying so hard to solve problems bigger than themselves. Dr. Aluso certainly is trying, even if no one listens to them. But for everyone's sake, I hope people do. The unexpected and early snowfall has left plenty of tidying up to do around the inn. I was not prepared for the change in weather as I should have been. The garden is going to need extra tending. I'll write when I can. Till then. Hey.